Today, I am making easy backpacking gear that almost anyone can create at home. Whoop! And just poop into it. It's working! Oh, yum! I know, it's so cool. That works so well. Super cozy. Later in this video, I'll show you how to make this. Whoa! But first, we are starting nice and easy with wag bags. <laughs> This is my show, gosh darn. So if you've never heard of wag bags before, they are bags that are used to carry out human waste, poop, from the backcountry. Wag bags are not required everywhere, but more and more parks are asking backpackers to carry them. While you would normally buy them at the store, they are super easy to make at home. So I'm gonna show you not only how to make your own wag bags, but also how to make a container for carrying out those wag bags and that poop. Because it's not, you, can, you don't just wanna like have a little bag with poop in it that you just like cart around with you. If this grosses you out, just, I don't know, pretend like you're using it to carry out banana peels or something. To make these at home, we are just using trash bags, a standard Ziploc bag, and some kitty litter. Okie dokie, artichoke, let's make it. Tablespoon measurement here. I'm going to scoop out one tablespoon. You can do two tablespoons, which is what I tend to go with. Again, totally up to you. One tablespoon of kitty litter is gonna weigh less ultralighters. So here I have my wag bag with my kitty litter in the bottom. I just wanna fold it as small as I can possibly get it while still keeping that kitty litter inside. Now you might be looking at this and you're like, all right, you just showed me how to make um, a bag with kitty litter in the bottom of it. And you're, just kinda, you're kinda right. Imagine I need to use one of these. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. I'm going to reach in, grab one of my wag bags. I'm going to slowly unroll it until I can see where the top of the bag is. There we go, there's the top of the bag. We're gonna shake that kitty litter down into the bottom. We're gonna open this up and then we would drop our poop in there from our butt. You have to just trust your butthole, you know what I mean? Ready for action. So now I have pooped in the bottom of my wag bag. I'm going to shake the poop down in there, and then I'm going to try and, and this is the gross part, get as much of the air out of this bag as possible. Do this away from your face, and then I'm gonna knot it up. Now I'm gonna take this poop, and I'm going to drop it into my poop tube, okay? Just like that. And because this container is still kind of see-through, you can actually see the bag in the bottom there. You can see the kitty litter, which means that you'd be able to see your poop. And we don't want to have to look at our poop, but we also want this to be clearly marked as a poop tube and as a poop container so that anybody at camp is not going to like mistake it for something else. Oh. Poop tube. Ta-da! So now you can see that you cannot see into the container to see your poop. Before I discovered the container idea, where you're like carrying a poop tube like this, I would just use a clear plastic bag and I would just cover that in duct tape so that I couldn't see through it. But this is a much, much better way to carry out poop because you have a hard sided container that is not going to puncture and is a lot less likely to get squished. Cool, all right, on to the next DIY, which is gonna take us to the kitchen. Bah. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make toothpaste tabs. We're essentially going to be dehydrating drops of toothpaste to make our toothpaste tabs. What you are going to need is some parchment paper, a small baking sheet, some baking soda, a plastic bag, tape, and scissors, or a small container for storing your toothpaste tabs, and of course, your toothpaste. So I want to preheat my oven to the lowest possible temperature that I can set, and for my oven, that is 170 degrees. So we're gonna preheat it to 170 because we don't wanna accidentally bake the toothpaste. We just want the oven hot enough that it will dry it out. What I'm going to do now is take my toothpaste and just drop little drops of it onto my parchment paper. When these are dry, they're gonna be a lot smaller. So keep that in mind. You don't wanna make them so tiny because then you're gonna have little tiny blobs of toothpaste that kind of crumble apart. We want them at least big enough that they can dry out and still hold their shape. So I'm gonna put these toothpaste drops in the preheated oven for two hours. A little bit of movie magic here. Ta-da! Here they are, it's been two hours and they're done. <laughs> so these are toothpaste tabs that I made this morning. You wanna come see them? I made these this morning. You can see they are dried out. So let's take these little toothpaste tabs over here to finish the process. You can't really tell this on camera, but they are not totally hard. Like they're a little bit malleable still. As they cool, 
they're going to get firmer, but they're still not like so solid that they wouldn't stick together. And that is where the baking soda comes in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our baking soda and just to help them keep from sticking together, I'm going to sprinkle them with a touch of baking soda. So yeah, now they're just a little bit easier to handle. They're a lot less likely to get stuck together and they're all kind of coated in a very, very light layer of baking soda. Let me go grab my toothbrush and we will give these a try. Toothpaste tab, in the mouth. It's working! <laughs> Ta-da! Wow, that works so well. Full disclosure, that's actually the first time I've tried them. I've made them, but I've never used them. That's my first time using them. Let's move on to our next DIY, which is also right here in the kitchen. Next up, we are making electrolyte gummies. So things are getting a little bit more complicated, but this is still very easy to do at home with just a few special supplies. Fruit juice, I'm making two different flavors of gummies. So I have two different flavors of fruit juice, a measuring cup, about a quarter cup of gelatin or agar agar if you're a vegan or vegetarian, a little dropper, silicone molds, a half teaspoon measuring spoon, and of course, your electrolyte powder. I am using Elements Orange Salt because I think it's gonna go really well with my orange juice and also my beet carrot orange juice that Rainer is skeptical of, but I think is good. I, it's a good juice. I just don't know how good it will taste as a gummy. You, you took a sip of it yesterday and this is literally what your face was. So one packet of gelatin is about a tablespoon's worth. So I'm using two packets per one cup of liquid, which is more than you would generally use if you were making like jello shots or something. We want them to be firmer, so we want them to hold their shape when they're put in a bag and taken with us on a backpacking trip. So, I just love that you use jello shots <laughs> as the example. When does anyone ever, like, what, like, when are you ever actually making jello? Jello shots? And then that like weird, like fruit jello salad that Midwesterners make. Are you knocking ambrosia salad? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> I'm just gonna dump this orange juice in here and we are going to warm it up. You can actually do this in the microwave as well. I'm just doing it on the stove top. Starting to simmer a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our gelatin and give it a good stir until the gelatin is totally dissolved. If you've made jello before and you're just more comfortable doing it in the microwave, just do that. That's basically all we're doing is we're just making jello. And now per one cup of liquid, I'm only gonna add half a packet of element. A packet of element is about a teaspoon, so I'm adding a half teaspoon into this mix. Okay, now it is time to fill our silicone molds. <laughs> Gotta be honest, this part sucks. It's really tedious. <laughs> We're done! We're gonna take these filled silicone molds with our two different flavors of juice and our orange element powder, and we're gonna pop them in the fridge for at least 20 to 30 minutes and see if they set up. All right. Sweet. Let's pop these out of the molds and get them in a bowl and do a taste test. These are my finished electrolyte gummies. Unfortunately, the ones that I made with the beet carrot ginger juice didn't really turn out. They just are kind of like jelly rather than like jello. So definitely use a full on fruit juice if you're gonna make these because the um, vegetables didn't really cut it. No. You ready for a taste test? Let's do it. Ooh. Oh, yum. Oh my gosh, they're great. Mm. Wow, these are actually delicious. If you like electrolyte gummies, this is an awesome way to get some electrolytes on your next backpacking trip in a way that isn't just like chugging water. Oh. Okay, whoa, whoa. Now, texture wise, these are more like jello than they are like the gummies that you would buy at a store that have like a bit of a firmer texture to them. But that's because it's really just three super simple ingredients. If you don't know by now, I love Element Electrolytes and I use Element on all of my backpacking trips. Element Electrolytes help me stave off migraines and a lot of symptoms of dehydration, things like muscle cramping or bonking or more. So if you have not yet tried Element, I would definitely recommend giving it a shot, whether you're just mixing it into your water or making these really fun fruit gummies. You can actually get a super sweet deal on Element if you go to my link, which is drinklmnt.com slash Miranda Goes Outside. If you place an order through that link, you will get a sample pack of all of Element's delicious flavors, and you can make as many fun electrolyte gummies as you want. Report back, tell me which ones are best. 
Next up, we are going to make this insulated food bag for keeping your dehydrated meals warm while they rehydrate. Here's what you're gonna need to make this. Reflectix insulation, a pair of scissors, Sharpie or other marker, duct tape, peel and stick Velcro, and then some kind of ruler or measuring tape. The first thing that we have to do is cut our Reflectix to size. For this project, I need a piece of Reflectix that is nine inches wide by 23 inches long. So I'm measuring out the width of the rectangle right now. That is nine inches, we're gonna mark it. And then 23 inches this direction, right here. So now we have our envelope of Reflectix. You can kind of start to see the bag come together. If you imagine this is your food bag right here, this edge will fold up, this edge will fold up on the back, and then we have our flap. We just need to assemble the sides of the bag. Again, this part does not need to be exact or perfect. You can totally modify this to be what you need. I just know that nine and a half inches is what I need. <laughs> There's two ways that you can do this. The easiest way is just to lay out duct tape and wrap it around the edge of your Reflectix, just like tape it on the outside. But what I would recommend doing, and what I wanna show you how to do, is to actually tape the inside edges of this. All right, keeping the Reflectix in place, I'm gonna lay my duct tape on the inside edge. Now what I can do is I can fold this back in on itself and then I can tape this edge down. All right, now we have an envelope. Boom. Wow. Yeah. Ta-da. You could in theory just stop here. You could be like, that's enough. <laughs> I'm finished. But we're gonna show you how to make the flat bottom. I'm gonna grab my Sharpie and then I'm going to mark out in this bottom corner a one and a half inch square. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So let's go ahead and cut out these squares. Now we have our pouch with our corners cut out. So if I press that seam down towards that folded bottom, you see that we wind up with the edges touching and that's how we're gonna make our bottom. I find the easiest way to do this is actually to almost like fold your pouch in half like this. So if you like pressing the edge down, just fold it on both sides. I'm gonna lay this flat on the table with the sticky side up and I am just going to lay this on my duct tape a little less than halfway to the center. Fold it, slit, fold it in. Do the same thing there. So now we have one bottom corner taped, as you can see. Now we're gonna do the other side. Up, fold it, folding the bottom up, back. Ta-da! So this is our bottom of our pouch. This is our front, our back, and the flap that we now get to cut, shape, and attach Velcro to. So we have our meal on the inside of our pouch with the flat bottom. I can now fold this over, and our pouch is done. For the next piece of backpacking gear that we're going to make ourselves, we are actually going to need a sewing machine. But don't go away. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can absolutely hand sew this. So the next thing that I want to make is actually a pocket and a strap that will allow me to attach my Philo Elite pillow to my sleeping pad. So for this piece of backpacking gear, what you're gonna need is a pillowcase, one you have at home that's old, is fine. You are gonna cut it up, so don't use your like best pillowcase. This is my pillow right here and I want the fabric that's covering it to like overlap a little bit. You know, I don't wanna cut it right here and then I'm gonna have to hem it too. So I'm gonna cut a line right here. I'm gonna cut a little slit right here which is where I want to cut my pillowcase. Boop. I'm just gonna fold the bottom part of my pillowcase up so that it uh, lines up with that slit and then I'm just gonna cut across. <laughs> We have a little mini pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> so if I just leave this raw, these little pieces of thread are all just gonna start coming out and I don't want that. But you could technically just use this like this and attach your elastic, which is my next step. But for my purposes, because I am a professional, I'm going to create a little rolled hem. Boop. To the sewing machine. Zoom, zoom. Bam. And we have a finished edge. Ta-da! Finished edge of our pillowcase. So now I need to attach a piece of elastic to either side of this pillow cover that is long enough to go around my sleeping pad and hold it in place. So let's grab our elastic to see how long that should be. Pin this in place. 
I just realized that I was inserting pins into this thing on top of my blown up sleeping pad. Probably a really bad idea, so <laughs> exercise caution. Now what I have is my cut and hemmed pillowcase with my elastic pinned on either side. Boop. All right, so here's our finished pillowcase. We have a piece of elastic attached to the back. We have our cut and hemmed pillowcase. Let's see if it works. Dude, just like totally stays in place. Now, if you do not want to make your own pillowcase and elastic strap, there is a company called Pillow Strap that makes a much better version of this that you can buy. But if you want to make your own with an old pillowcase and some elastic, super easy to do. I think we're finished with this. We are on to our next piece of backpacking gear that you can make at home. The next thing that I'm going to make is a super simple no-sew neck gaiter. I love it. I think it's really comfy. This is a perfect fleece neck gaiter for winter time. So this is a piece of backpacking gear that I always carry once the weather starts to get cold and they're very, very easy to make at home. All right, cool. For this neck gaiter, you're going to need a piece of fleeced fabric that is cut to 26 inches long by 20 inches wide. I got the 26 inch length by measuring the circumference of my head. My head is about 22 and a half inches. And then adding a few extra inches on the end, which is how we're going to tie and assemble this neck gaiter. Also, it is not required to have an incredibly bizarre funky pattern on your fleece, but I think it helps. So I'm gonna lay my fleece out wrong side up. So this is the inside of the fleece. This is the outside of the fleece and fold it back in half. So we've measured 11 and a quarter inches down from our folded edge, which is half the circumference of my head. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut through both layers of fabric like this up to this marker. Boom, there we go. All right, so now we have a piece of fleece with some fringe on the end. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to knot the top strip with the bottom strip. And I'm just tying it in a knot. That is all. Super, super easy. There we go. We have our neck gaiter. Want me to try it on? Yep. Ta-da! Do I look cool? I love it. I think it's really comfy. <laughs> you could just stop here if all you want is a neck gaiter, but I want to show you a really easy way to make your neck gaiter a convertible beanie. So we're going to take our neck gaiter with our knots on the outside. We're going to turn it inside out. And for this step, you are going to need another small strip of fleece. So what I want to do is I want to tie the middle of this strip of fabric to the middle of my line of knots on my gaiter on the inside. I'm gonna thread this strip of fleece through that hole right there. Oh, I really tied that tight. <laughs> Get in there. Hey, come on, get through there. See you, there you are. Come on, get through there. It's so easy, there's no problem whatsoever. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, boom. Here is where the magic happens. So now we're gonna take this little strip of fleece that we have threaded through that knot. We're gonna tie this piece of fabric around our gaiter, pull it nice and tight. And now we're going to take this edge and fold it over. How do I look? Yeah, so you're not gonna win any like style points for wearing a fleece beanie like this, but it is very comfortable. It's kind of cool, actually. Come on, that's a pretty nifty thing. I have come to the last piece of backpacking gear that I'm going to try and make. This is the most complicated and maybe the most experimental of these DIYs, but it also should be super cool. I am going to try and turn this Nalgene into a lantern. Now, before you say you can already do that by taking your headlamp and turning it on a full Nalgene, yes, you can, but I had these string lights lying around and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could turn these string lights into a really fun, moody, aesthetic lantern using my Nalgene so that my headlamp is free to be used as a headlamp. So what you will need is a piece of fabric. I have a white piece of cotton here that is fairly see-through and seems to pretty well diffuse the light from the string lights, which I want. I have cut this fabric to be 13 and a quarter inches long by six and a half inches wide. That gives me enough material to wrap around my Nalgene, hem the edges, and then have enough of an overlap to attach the fabric in on itself in a loop. And then the width on this accommodates for the height of the Nalgene, plus a little bit of extra for the hem on the edges. 
I gotta be honest, y'all. I'm pretty nervous about this one. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I really hope it does. Oh, buddy. Cue sewing montage. Big loops. All right. We are done. Ta-da. <laughs> this one's a little wacky. <laughs> so now what we have here is our fabric that wraps around our Nalgene. And then we have sewn across these loops. So we have a bunch of small loops where I can thread my lights through. I got a big bulky battery on one end, which means that I need to start from the tiny end and thread these all the way through. If this doesn't work and it was just a big waste of time, at least it's been fun. <laughs> but if it does work, this is a really awesome way to use fairy lights, which are very easy to tangle and actually turn them into something functional and practical for camping and backpacking. And also kind of a fun project, she says as she spends Next 25 minutes weaving lights. <laughs> Done! Woo! There you have it! All right, before we wrap it around my Nalgene and we attach the Velcro, let's just see how it looks when it's turned on. I mean, that's actually cool. Okay, okay, this might be cool. These are just peel and stick Velcro dots designed specifically for fabric. One, two, three. Boom. All right. Boom. Production assistant, fill my Nalgene. <laughs> Thank you. So I have here my fabric light. Woo! The last moment to see if this works. Oh, okay. <gasps> that one holds, that one holds, and that one holds. What a fit, like custom made. All right, so we've dimmed the lights. This is the moment of truth to see how my lantern turned out. Three, two, one. Wow! Oh, dude, that is tight! Oh my gosh, look at all of the light it's letting off! This is actually way cooler than I thought it was gonna be! Whoa! So cool to see how the light reflects off of the Nalgene. I'm putting into strobe light mode. It's not strobe light mode, it's just me turning it on and off again. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Of all of the backpacking gear that I made, this lantern was definitely the hardest and maybe the least practical. But that being said, there is some backpacking gear I made in this video that I am super excited to take on my future backpacking trips. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss seeing that. Let me know in the comments below which one of these pieces of backpacking gear was your favorite and which one you're most likely to make at home. If there are other pieces of backpacking gear you want me to try and make, let me know in the comments as well. And as always, I will see you outside. Bye. Glowy lantern, beautiful light, guiding our way on our most recent hike.